Do you feel bad knocking out one of your friends? <laughs> Have you seen how much shit she's been talking? Literally, <laughs> she does true. nothing, but yeah. she printed my face out and put it on a little punching bag. Yep. And she streams and every now and then she starts punching it. Like I did feel bad. Um, and sometimes I think she's joking, joking, but <laughs> I don't know if she is. All right, here we go. C Squared Podcast episode. I'm not 100% sure what this one will be. We have uh, Alexandra and Andrea Botes in the house. Thank you for hosting in us. In our house. <laughs> in your house. Thank you for hosting us. Uh, I just want to start with you, Andrea, because this is mostly why we're we are here in uh, for LA. For me. For just you, mostly. Yes. Um, you are going to fight. I am fighting. That is a actually insane. I Tell know. I am still having panic attacks about it every day. Um, and Andrea, I never thought I'd say this, but maybe put your mic closer. <laughs> oh yeah, these I feel, these ones are sensitive. Um, this Sunday, so you guys are here for the chess boxing event. Mostly, yeah. yes. Nice. Yes. Are you doing commentating or just? We're watching? just gonna watch. Nice. I'm excited. Um, but yeah, I'm fighting in Ludwig's chess boxing. So it's gonna be four rounds of chess, three rounds of boxing. You win by knockout or checkmate. Hopefully I knock her out because she's a grandmaster and I'm not even a master. Um, but I've been training and working very hard for it. Yeah. Who do you guys want to bet on? Dina or Andrea? Who do we want to bet on or who do we think will win? Who would you bet on? Oh, this is okay. What are the odds? I like being the underdog. Okay, what are the odds one though? To one. Uh, one to one? I'm going to have to take Dina. I'm sorry. No, I like I'm it because I'm going to Do you want to make a bet right guys. now? Yes. Alex will gamble. Okay. How much do you want to do? Take his you money, tell me. Alex. A thousand. Do you want to do a hundred? Sure, let's do a hundred. Triple it. Double it. Do you want to do three hundred? Let's do a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no confidence in this bet because I don't know what? anything about her boxing. <laughs> yeah, like maybe she's going to get knocked out within the first minute, but it's on camera. She will get knocked out within that. The first that minute. could happen. I mean, I wouldn't be upset. It's that's that's fair. No, it's a fair good, bet. All right, we have it on camera. <laughs> I'm excited to see my. This is going to be see, the Andrea, second See, I was you willing went. to bet even more on you. But I, I appreciate yeah. it. No, you're, you're a good sister. But mainly the analysis was based on your chess. Because we didn't think that yes. you can actually knock her out. That, <laughs> and that, that's, I mean, that's what all of my coaches have been saying. Like, everyone's going to underestimate you, um, which makes sense. Because I've only had six weeks of training to train. There's no way I'm going to be a pro boxer in six weeks. But I think people will be surprised when I go no, into boxing. No, no, no. I think you can take her in boxing. I actually have no doubt about that. I think you would beat her in boxing, but I don't think you will knock her out. And then in chess, she has like what, 400 rating points over yeah, you or something? Yeah, she has like a lot of points on me. So that's that's a lot. Yeah. So it is it is a challenge. I, I heard something from Lawrence tonight that it's only a minute and a half of of boxing, boxing which is yes. not much, he said. I don't yes. know anything about boxing, but he said it's not much. So, so 90, 90 second rounds for boxing, two minutes for chess. But if you look at the other crater fights, almost all of them were ended prematurely. Like some of them ended in 15 seconds, and these are grown men who trained for like several months. So I think because we're really small and we're also noobs, like if I land one combo in those 90 seconds, I think it's over. It's but you have to be, of course, you need like one perfect punch. But I think we'll, it'll happen. Would you feel bad knocking out one of your friends? <laughs> Have you seen how much shit she's been talking? <laughs> Literally, That's she does true. nothing, but yeah. she printed my face out and put it on a little punching bag yeah. and she streams and every now and then she starts punching it. Like I did feel bad. Um, and sometimes I think she's joking, joking, but I don't know if she is. Like, Did you guys talk about it? Well, that's the thing. Well, we were friends. We were friends. We met in- What do you mean we were? We're not anymore. <laughs> Maybe we'll be after. She can join me for a bowl of celebratory mac and cheese after, <laughs> but before no more friendship. Um, and we were even playing matches because I was like, oh, let's train, like, let's make content. And then the last like three weeks, we just cut off all content, all contact with each other, um, just stopped talking to each other. And now we just shit talk each other. And you guys actually traveled to Romania yeah, recently she and she was Romania. there as well and she was helping you yeah. with content. How yeah. was that relationship? Did you guys know that you were going to fight at that point? Well, we knew six weeks before the event, so no. no. But she was great. Like, um, that, that was one of my favorite things for the chess travel show. Yeah, that we, we did. loved Dina, and she yeah, was also she was on our last guest. season of traveling. She's like, super she's, entertaining, she's a great awesome. chess player, added a lot to the show, um, but now she's my greatest enemy. So, why did you decide to fight with Dina? Um, so, Ludwig asked me about this event a long time ago, and we were supposed to be gone in December, so I was like, there's no way. It was an easy no. And then six weeks before, 
I we get a call and our show for this year is moved to next year. So I'm like, hmm. And I checked my messages and I got a message from one of their organizers and they're like, we're looking for an opponent for Dina Belenkaya. And I was like, I don't know why. I, I like to make impulsive decisions, but it just felt like fate. No, you <laughs> impulsive. <laughs> yeah, it just felt like fate because I was like, well, our show's canceled. What type of coincidence that I would get a reminder on the same day? It was God's sign. I was meant to fight. I was actually surprised because Andrea and I had talked about it before and she didn't want to fight. And you just had this huge switch. Yeah, no, I just, I don't know, I just felt it in me. I, I, I don't know, I don't know what's hit me, but I'm glad I did. You should trust your gut. Yeah, exactly. End, right? it was a, I mean, okay, uh, on a deeper level, like I've always been really into like working out and I would do workout streams and like, I was getting really strong and pretty impressed with progress, but it never really leads to anything because you can't make content around it. You can't do anything. So I was like, it is a perfect fit. And, you know, I want to, I, I like it as a challenge. Like you get to become in the best shape of your life. And I was down for that. That's actually a very good point. Now, tell us how does one day in the world of Andrea Botas look like? Well, since uh, you started training. Yeah, since I started, I've been very lonely. My sister knows because when you're waking up and boxing every day at 7 a.m. for two hours a day, and then you have to recover all day. You don't have a lot of energy to go out and do things as I usually do. Um, so I'd say like, this is the most disciplined I've been in my entire life. Um, right now I was training six days a week and other, other weeks were six to five days a week where you wake up, you go to the gym for two hours. Um, then I come home, I do some work like YouTube or stream and then since we're training so intensely and I was so behind the other fighters, it, the nighttime is typically just like recovery. Like you have to take Epsom salt, you have to roll your muscles, you have to ice things, you have injuries. So it's just like recovery and training and dieting and every day on repeat. Sounds it, really bro. -like, was the challenge, like you mentioned the challenge was the part that interested you. Was it more the physical challenge or was it also the chess challenge? So trying to play someone who is a very strong player. <laughs> I was like, I would rather just box her. I did not want to do the chess. That was the last thing. Having six weeks for this event, I was like, I don't want to train any chess, which initially we we're going to do a tag team. Mm -hmm. Alex was going to play chess against her because yeah, yeah. it seemed much more fair. But we just thought that win or lose, that's just not cool because yeah. everybody will say, hey, exactly. you got a 2v1. I'd rather lose like a real champ yeah, or exactly. win and impress everyone than, you know, win. And it's and like, you would get to recover while yeah. she plays chess. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. well, you both sit down, so technically you're both recovering. But yeah, she'd be thinking and yeah. I would be watching. But it, we also thought it would be really tough to play chess after your, like the physical exertion and the toll that takes on you is yeah. also part of the challenge. That Yeah, that's like the whole like you know, what makes the sport what it is. That's the challenge. But I honestly don't think the recovery is that challenging what about for me as well. Andrea and I were in London and we went to a chess boxing club there and we tried to somewhat mimic it. Yeah. And it did seem like it affected you then. Oh yeah. If you're not in good physical shape, luckily- Oh, were you just not in shape? I was not in shape. Oh my God. I was, we had been on the road for a month. Like I, I was eating like shit. I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. But before I was pretty lucky cause I was getting intense. I was getting back to like working out three, four days a week before I signed up for this. Um, so I think I have a slight advantage because like I would see Dina in Romania and she'd be impressed. Like I'd be going to the gym the morning before the stream. So I know I have a little bit more experience like catching up in the fitness part. Not you have inside talk. info about yes. her uh, situation. Well, she knows, she knows that, which is but, why but she doesn't want to fight But she's in good shape as well, right? She's in great shape, but I think I'm in better shape. Okay. I'll say it. And you mentioned that you did some boxing before. Um, was that the case or did you do some fitness I did classes, boxing? But doesn't comp like real boxing is so different. Like I thought I did boxing. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. I went to box. I've punched bag stuff, but no, I see the first day in training. I was like, everything I'd be do doing was wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not really. I didn't really have an experience. When did you start sparring? people? Um, I think funny enough, my first week of boxing, um, because the girl I was sparring, so I don't know if you guys know Creator Clash. It's a big YouTuber so. yeah, yeah. box. It's the one that our roommate Minx fought in and she won. Um, and it was like the first big YouTube with multiple create. Like there's the Paul brothers, but those are smaller. This was like streamers and YouTubers. Um, and my opponent, the girl who I was sparring is someone who's been training for the Creator Clash. And she had been training for like eight weeks more than me. Um, but in like one week, my coach was like, no, I have like, he was very confident in me. 
and I think now I was able to catch up. Um, but I think that was the best practice to start sparring Didn't really you early. you bruise her? That was the second time, yeah. But she uh, gave me a little bruise. Too. I saw this video recommended on my channel recently by Ludwig, where he's like ranking people based on tiers, of uh, creators based on tiers of who he would be fight? able to beat in a fight and who, who would destroy him in a fight. And at the end, there's like a bunch of chess players who are left. <laughs> and he's like, you know, I, you guys probably want me to rank all the chess players now, but there are a bunch of fucking nerds and I just them all. <laughs> we should, that was the end of the video. We should have a rebuttal after the chess box. That must have been like a year ago. Look where it was, he is It now. was a while ago. Now he's exactly. organizing the chess yeah. boxing championship. That's hilarious. But I'm, I would like to see more chess fights. Do you, do you guys have any ideas of like what would be good chess boxing matchups? Well, first, I want to ask you guys, would you ever be interested in some sort of crossover of chess and fitness content? Yeah, I would. You would? I would. Yeah, for sure. Who would be your dream opponent to fight? No, I, I, would, I would take Anish. Like, I always say this. Anish, Anish, Anish? Anish is who I would fight. We're probably Anish around the close. same weight. Yeah. But he's taller than me, but we're probably around the same weight. That'd be a really, I wish yeah, you guys signed up. Anish is a good one. I cannot... So I've been doing some martial arts. I used nice. to do kickboxing for three years uh, back when I was living in uh, San Francisco. And after that, in the last four years, I've been doing only jujitsu. So I've been thinking chess jitsu could I be one thing. I was thinking she about that, that because I didn't want to do boxing because I don't want to punch somebody. But if it was something like jujitsu, I, I would stopped, like that. That's why I stopped kickboxing because I was taking too many hits to the head and yeah. I was like, I need my See my us brain. older people, this is what we want. Look, exactly. you guys have valid points, but unfortunately <laughs> the masses like to watch a gladiator fight. Correct. It's not yeah. as yes. entertaining if you're rolling on the ground. So jujitsu is like chess, but on the mat. People that are from the outside do not understand yes. what's happening. So it's very... Boxing is so easy, right? Yep. You see somebody easy get to punched yep. in the face, you start clapping. What about a chess MMA? That's aggressive, yeah. yeah. Just, I, I, I don't know, if, I I don't know if any chess players would be able to handle that, though. But we should leave it at chess boxing. I, I like yeah. the idea of chess boxing. I would definitely do that. Yeah. It, the, the brain thing, and it's funny, like seeing feedback and like just feedback from the chess community on my chess boxing announcement because you know chess players are more conservative they're very about safety they want to preserve your brain because it makes for you know um but so many people were upset they're like oh my god how could you do this like you guys are grandmasters and chess players it's so silly you're putting yourself at risk which is fair but i feel like my generation is complete opposite and don't really con worry about that as much no alexandra for the better the worse Andrea was mentioning that she's becoming more of the older sister because she's like very regimented. She <laughs> wakes up early in the morning. Do you enjoy uh, that aspect? Now that you've question. been talking about us being older, mm -hmm. are you enjoying that slow pace, let's say? Are you saying I'm slow paced? No, no, no I'm He's not saying, saying you're fast paced. I'm, I'm asking you if you're enjoying that from Andrea. Um, I'm very proud of her because she has been so disciplined that it's also motiv motivated me to continue my fitness regimen because you know you can't have one sister that's way more fit than the <laughs> other and she's been doing well she's been training like three four days a week in the gym <laughs> on her own now i have and i also have a trainer who i work out with so it's gonna take hard. me a while but i'm getting there no but honestly she's been so busy that it kind of sucks we do a lot less together now. She always has to go to sleep early. It's so late. She's My gone life in the is morning. So, lame. so I honestly just miss having a sister. Oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. yeah. I know. Like we had this big Christmas dinner on Friday. I was like so excited to see all my friends. I was like, finally. And then I realized yeah. Friday I can't eat any food because the way in Saturday. So I was like, great. Another night. Yeah. Yeah. But soon. So what's your fitness r routine like? Uh, I have a trainer who I work with like three days a week and I do weights and then the other days I do like an hour of cardio. Okay. The only problem with me is when I travel, my routine goes completely berserk. So that's it's over when you travel. Yeah, yeah, it's completely over. When I'm home, I'm so good. I'm working out. I'm usually eating pretty well, except for like, let's say some cheat days. But then when I travel, I'm inconsistent. I'm either zero or one. Did you manage to find the routine when you travel? Nope. Nope. How Still about working you guys? on it. Because chess tournaments, being in physical shape is very important. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult once you lose that routine and traveling like just t totally ruins it, especially when you're playing chess. Because yeah. then you can't work out. Yeah. You have to prepare and then play. And maybe you have like a, an hour in the morning. Yeah. We were actually doing that when we were, um, when Christian was my second for the Sinkfield Cup. 
we would do it first thing in the morning because that was the only time that we would have motivation to. So Actually, the best I want to ask you out. about it. Did you feel like it helped at all? Did you enjoy that or? Yeah, I did that for the U.S. Championship too because really? I, I liked it. That's good. And then I dropped off recently because it's been so busy that I haven't been able yeah. to work on. Uh, was it? I remember reading in some article when you were training for the World Championship that. Uh, you lost so much weight while you were playing the match that you were trying to bulk up. Was that true? Yeah, I probably lost like 15 pounds during the match. 15 pounds so during the match? working out. And do you think it was from no, stress? Yeah, it was stress. Wow. That's awful. And like like just burning calories at the board. Yeah. But a lot of stress too. That was probably the most weight I've lost during a tournament. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. And I feel that was uh, a problem for us as well. We didn't really have very good restaurants. During the world oh, championship. No, this match. is what Magnus does really well, is that he um, has a chef, which is really great. Cool. his own him. people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like a professional athlete. Yeah. Like the NBA has a chef. But chess players are yeah. dumbasses when it they comes to that. They have to adopt yeah. that mindset, yeah. but it's hard to realize how important it is. We were actually thinking of like a YouTube challenge where we're training chess and getting really healthy. And the whole concept being, if you're physically healthy, does that make you smarter? And obviously that's a clickbait title, but the idea is measuring our chess ELO while also being on a more strict diet. What like do you it. guys think? I like, I like that idea, yeah. I think do you'd, you think see, it you'd see improvement, yeah. At any level, you'd see improvement. Once your like, general health goes up, your chess level will go up. 100%, and I think it's also important that you have a routine. You cannot yeah. get healthy without a routine, right? And once you establish that, it spills over into everything else, yep. including chess, yeah. including your own. Yeah, like you train better, you memorize better the lines and things of that nature. You calculate better. Yeah. Also, you have much more confidence. And I think this is extremely important for chess players. Actually, on that note, do you feel like your chess has improved now that you've been working out a lot and, <laughs> and training, boxing a lot? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, it's hard to compare because like I said, there's not a lot of time, so the only time you I hit blitz. your personal best on Puzzle Rush. Yeah, Puzzle Rush. You know, it doesn't. It's not that a real. That counts. That's something. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but whenever I play on stream, it's like you know, you're doing really well. You gain 50 points, then you look at chat, you get distracted, and then you tilt, and then you lose double what you gain. So that never really changes. Um, and I haven't been playing chess off stream, so it's hard to compare. Maybe it's more suited for like classical chess playing, where you can. Yeah, like you, you don't go on those like long benders. And yeah, all my chests are just long benders. I actually find when I'm in a routine and healthy, I tend to play better blitz, and that's when I tend to reach my all-time highs, which is why I wanted to try the challenge, also because I want to do both. Well, you've also been very healthy the last couple of weeks, so do you think you've seen a change? Well, I was healthy until I went to New York for a week, <laughs> and then my routine completely fell apart. Yeah, um, but you've been back for what two weeks? And you've I, been very been back healthy. For n a week? Uh, but I, have you no lose the I haven't even been back right? for a week yet. Okay, yeah, I don't know. You also well. lose the motivation. You lose the motivation because so you feel bad. That's why, it. yeah. For us, when we do the chess travel show, that's one of our hardest times because we're going to like three or four different countries in a month. We lose all consistency. And that's actually the probably the most difficult content piece we do just because it kills your entire routine. And right, also, it's, it's like something you look forward to once you get into it. It's yeah. like you look forward to do it every day. And then once you stop, for some reason, you just stop liking. I don't understand yeah. why this phenomenon happens. But whenever I work out a lot, I start to enjoy it. And then I stop and I'm like, I don't want to work out. I don't want to wake up for this. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing. It's mostly because you have so many other distractions. Mm -hmm. And it's so difficult to wake up at like 7 o'clock and be like, the first thing that I have to do is go and work out. And if you build that routine, then it becomes extremely easy something that actually you enjoy yeah 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 now I have a question for you Andrea mm -hmm. one of the biggest pet peeves whenever I um, train whenever I do jujitsu martial arts I'm so afraid just before I go to fight because oh. I know that there's yeah. somebody else that wants to put me down yeah <laughs> yeah you're going to make that walk in a couple of days yes what are your emotions right now I mean I know I've I've been just re-watching videos of other creators entering and people talking about how their fight went. So I know that what I'm feeling is completely normal and I know also what to expect. Like I've been, my nerves are turning more into excitement because I'm starting to feel pretty confident with my skill. 
Um, but I know that the day of, the second you're going to get there, like everyone is, there's no way, your adrenaline's going to be all time high. And that's the reason once you get in the ring, you don't remember anything. Like you have, that's why you can take punches because you're so, you have so much adrenaline, like you don't even feel anything after it, it all feels like a blur. Mm -hmm. It's also weakness because it's really hard to remember all these technique and all these things that you've practiced in the ring when you're really high on yeah. adrenaline. Um, but I know that that's normal. So I'm just expecting it. And I know that the day of is going to be the most stressful. And until then, all I can do is just stay as calm as I can. But when you listen to people's stories fighting, it's crazy. Like people have concussions that they don't even feel it until they lay down because they're so excited during the fight. They miss like 20, 30 minutes yeah. of their life. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't remember any. Like everyone who fought in Crater Clash, they talk about it and they don't remember anything from the fight. So th this will probably come out after the fight. So can you discuss <laughs> strategy or do you have like specific strategies for how to beat her? Yes. Oh, this is actually very funny. Um, we're sure this is coming yes, after, right? Yes, we're, right? Our we're lawyer, not leaking I anything. We're not out. leaking I mean, anything. We won't have time in Unless four days. Unless you guys want us to leak anything. Um, I mean, one <laughs> funny thing. So I have been doing a little bit of chess prep with my coach Hammer. Um, and I, so I find out the color day before. And then I was the white openings I was doing on my own. And I have a good friend who's very good at the London, Eric Rosen. And I remember looking at Dina's lines. It was a line that Eric showed me and I forgot. And I messaged him just asking for like one or three moves. And he was so nice. He made an entire video. He screen recorded a 20 minute video explaining he made a chess base file. So hopefully if I end up getting the so white wholesome. pieces, I want Eric Rosen to post his video because it was the nicest thing anyone's ever done. It was very nice. So that's my chess prep. But yeah, Eric Rosen's prep and Hammer's chess ball. Um, Wait, which, Hammer made you do his chess ball? Oh, I always what's, do his what's chess What's the ball. chess ball on? What's your oh, oh, he makes me his private one, so he doesn't have oh, a phone. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hammer no, actually, his course. Actually, it's, it's, it's very but convenient because Hammer has put our stuff on chess ball, so it's yeah. easier for us to learn. Yeah, okay. I have that's not what I did for my last time. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't realize it was like a very good way of doing that because oh, I always use chess ball. You've never for studied your own opening lines? On there? No. Not yeah, like you <laughs> upload lines. Oh, wait. I love Andrea explaining this to Bobby. <laughs> Andrea, please, how do you wait, put sorry, the lines on? No, I'm, I'm really old fashioned. I, I don't I know the How do you study openings? On, on chess base. How do you? Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I was going to tell you. <laughs> if you take what's on chess base and you put on chess bowl, it's just like 10 times better. Is it? Okay. Well, because they quiz you on it. Like, yeah, you're looking through lines and guessing yourself, but it's just doing it for you and it's timing okay. you. And it remembers what you don't remember as well, so it gives you that one more. I've started to try to figure out the chessable interface a bit because I have to. Are you guys I, having a course coming out on chessable? Is, is, no, is no, no. We, we, no, we should. <laughs> you guys should make one. That would be yeah. so cool. It's very time consuming. But yeah, a great no, that's, that's what I've heard. It's, uh, yeah, I, I agree to do one. And Do you have, is it out? No, no, no. It's okay. I don't know when I'll have time to do it, but I'll try to find yeah. time to do it. That's the story of every chess player I know. They've been yeah. Hammer has been working on his course for like a year and a half, I think. Maybe even longer. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Well, when I, come I out. honestly think it's because a lot of the top players, the grandmasters, they don't actually want to teach. It's just lucrative. So yeah. You're forcing like yourself to do something that you don't actually like. Right. I, I think it's also very attractive to make something that's very high quality that will remain there and that's people will learn from it. That's a much more positive spin that I also agree on. No, I like. I, I wouldn't want to just put some crap out there. And yeah. I've talked talked to other yeah. grandmasters who who have done them or who want to do them and. They also want to make a quality product, but sometimes you don't manage. But you that. also have to target a specific audience. Yeah. Well, they, they you have to explain things yeah. in a certain manner that a lot of the grandmasters just mm -hmm. simply don't know how to explain. But that's very important um, for for grandmasters in general to learn how to teach people of all levels chess. I think. Alexandra, are you excited about this uh, chess boxing event? How will you feel if Andrea gets hit in the head? Like the first punch, even if it's like Oh, I'll kill Dina. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be on the sidelines trying to jump in, trying yo, to get yo, in no, the I, action? I, so I remember when Andrea and I were watching Minx's fight, and it was terrible to watch Minx get punched. You know, Alex I was and so nervous. Like, oh, no, I can't look. <laughs> and then I remember thinking, oh, at least it's not Andrea. <laughs> well, yeah, I, it, it, it's honestly going to be terrible. I don't, don't, don't want to watch it. It'll be worse for her than for me. 
you think is going to be worse I'm for sure. me than for you? I'm sure. <laughs> for her than for you. I, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, I think it's awful to watch your sibling get punched. My dad will be there too. Yeah, he Papa told me the Botas. Same thing. Papa Botas. He will be there. Like, okay. Papa Botas and I will be holding each other's hand, squirming. <laughs> we we have a kickboxer in the family. Who's won Oli- oh, who's won Olympic? Not a, he. He's won the world he championship won? for his Sorry, weight class. Yeah. Up. And my dad okay. told me that he wouldn't even watch him fight. Yeah. And he was like at that level. So I don't yeah, know if so dad watching, even wants to watch. I don't know how our dad is going to watch, but is, he'll be there. Is your dad upset that you agreed to do it? I uh, wasn't up. He was just like, why can't he? He said the same thing. Like, why can't you do it in a way where you don't put your brain at risk? I'm like, dad, and he you kept don't coming up with silly ideas. Like, oh, oh my God. what if you guys just like act it out? You know, like, <laughs> yeah, he kept telling me, like dad, you can't rig the <laughs> fight. I'm going to have to fight. That's another idea. He tried. Chess <laughs> wrestling. Chess boxing. Yeah, chess wrestling. Yeah. Hilarious. Like like yeah, he tried, but he didn't. Succeed. They're they're happier that she's using headgear because mm-hmm. that was a big thing that my parents were very nervous about. Yeah, which is a people don't know because we we were gonna. I was sure I was gonna convince her not to fight with headgear, which I don't know why I was so confident. Um, but yeah, she doesn't want to fight with head without it, which is fair. It's almost as if she's a pro chess player who doesn't yeah. want brain damage. Um, Did you guys agree on that, or was it uh, sanctioned? So. By the yeah, so everyone has to fight with headgear. The only way you can do without it is if both of you agree. Got it. Which Got it. Are most yeah. people doing it without? I have no idea, honestly. I'm excited Actually, that's, to find I'm out. very curious about that. Because but, also yeah. for Lawrence's fight, it's very relevant. Yeah. yeah. I assume oh, yeah, Lawrence true. wants to the, not use headgear. The thing is, headgear doesn't really prevent injuries. Like, if you get punched in the head, you're taking the same amount of trauma. Yes. And if anything, your head is even a bigger target. Um, but I guess like if you want to not break a jaw or nose, yes. But head trauma wise, it's the same. Not only that, but your defense is worse. Yes. And you can't Because see. you feel confident about exactly. the headgear. And exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it's that's just true. as risky in some terms. So that's some interesting. So it's just, so you, nobody breaks anything, but I if you actually get punched. I don't know why. It, it, like yeah. you don't want to break your nose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, mine doesn't defend my nose. Somebody, somebody broke. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the one How would you feel if you broke your nose? Be sad, but free nose job, right? <laughs> to finally get the nose of my dreams. Oh my god! We're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> We're definitely not going to get in. No, I was just—I was just thinking, like, because I—I have never broken my nose. Is that—that's not like a serious. Like, they oh, fix that up very easily, right? Not sure about that. It's going to be very um, easily uh, breakable in the future if you break it once. Once you break oh, it once, okay. you're gonna it's get more hit. vulnerable. Yeah, well, super vulnerable. Okay. Yeah. Just like with everything else. Like if you get a concussion, your brain is going to be pretty rattled for mm-hmm. a very long time. Have you guys ever had a concussion? Not that I know of. I don't think I did, but I got hit in the head and that's more or less why. Like I never forgot anything and I never got knocked out. So I guess I never had How, a concussion. Why did you get hit in the head? Hmm? Why did you get hit in the head? I was doing kickboxing. Oh, okay. I used to okay. do kickboxing. So maybe sparring. Yeah. Crazy yeah. chest sparring. bar No, 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 just something. sparring. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Actually, so, speaking of chess fights, have have you guys seen the uh, Hikaru Eric? <laughs> that is my favorite <laughs> video on the internet. That would be the Kung chess Fu. boxing fight. That would be the most entertaining to watch. <laughs> it was pretty entertaining. Yeah. Make that it happen. You, were, you, you were there, right? Content. Yeah, it was like a chess party. I forget which tournament it was. Maybe it was like a U.S. Championship, and yeah. they were playing Blitz. I wasn't paying attention to Blitz. I was in another part of the room. But they were arguing about some something to do with the Blitz. <laughs> it was, I don't know what the argument was. They were both absolutely trashed, I'm sure. <laughs> and they just took it to the yard and then they didn't do anything. They just stood there. The, the best part is Yasser is just going on and on about this ring. Like, doesn't even pay attention to the fight. Yas- Have you so seen fun. a lot of top players getting into physical fights at tournaments? I've only seen one other one. Can you uh, tell us? Yeah, I can. I, I might as well. Do. I, don't, I hope Hikaru doesn't mind. <laughs> <laughs> it well, was Hikaru, Hikaru. <laughs> okay. Hikaru is not a sensitive guy. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't no, care. C- I'll preface it by saying Hikaru won the tournament. It was at the yeah. Gibraltar tournament, uh, Gibraltar 2017. And he had won- just won the tournament, and it was like a huge prize fund, like 50 grand he won. And he was celebrating, and he had a lot of drinks. Mm-hmm. And I was playing Blitz against uh, Simon Williams. And it was like time on splits, like one minute against five minutes, something like that. And we were just playing for fun. I don't think any money was on the line. Um, but he car- comes in and he's watching and he starts trash talking Simon. <laughs> <laughs> like very aggressively trash talking him. 
saying like how how are you playing like this like, how are you losing one five minutes against one that's and really funny. at some point simon says something back and they get into it i don't remember the details i was also a little bit tipsy but not super drunk um and then they started he was like yeah i'll play you five against one any any amount 10 grand 20 grand oh my god and then they were like they were starting to arrange chess boxing like they were actually <laughs> he was like chess boxing one million dollars six months from now what? and and then eventually they take it outside the hotel and they stay there until roughly like 5 a.m <laughs> at some point the the hotel staff is like we're going to call the police because <laughs> you're making noise and you're waking up guests that's and so eventually funny. it got broken up. Nobody got, nobody fought, nobody got hurt. Fight or no, no, no. They, they just, just like, it was exactly like against just... Eric. They just stood off. <laughs> they just stared each other down for like two straight hours. Do you, know that, do you know that funny. video of the dogs barking at each other with um, the, the, the bridge or whatever it is in between them? And then the gate opens up and then they shut up. And they don't even look yeah at they did they you didn't want that. to fight nobody wanted anyone to fight. and then the bridge closes again and then they start barking at each other again but they were it was just like a macho thing you know they were that's like very that's funny. hilarious and simon's a strong guy yeah he's a simon's, big guy simon's yeah. really caro had that, some guts yeah. Zero confronting him. For that's, Hikaru. that's true yeah that's really funny i mean props to caro for provo starting the chess boxing content we didn't even know he was he the was, original one. He was the first. He, he would make a great matchup. I wish he would chess box. I and I think he mentioned that. He said that he's going to fight Magnus if the money is right. Ooh. I think That's he was thinking about like five mil or something. Wow. But weight class is all off, right? Doesn't matter. For five mil, just, he's no, like, I'm ready. Weight doesn't matter. <laughs> For five mil, <laughs> For five I think. Mil, they'll, they'll, that would they'll fight the weight. I'm sure they could find it. <laughs> Wait, so who do you guys have as a favorite, Amon versus Lawrence? We, we already covered this a little bit. First, you guys say who, who you who you think is the favorite in that match. Well, so you have Amon stronger at chess, Lawrence stronger in boxing. Um, and before when the boxing was going to be for two minutes, I thought Lawrence was a favorite. For a minute and a half, Amon might survive. I've seen Amon fight before at an Olympiad, um, and he put up a good fight. But he did end up with a black eye. Wait, can, was you, that can you tell that story? Was that boxing though, or was it grappling? It may have been grappling. I think you were oh, I there. remember. It was against that Danish guy. Yeah, you were there. What was his he name? Had chess fight. <laughs> it was in Azerbaijan. Yeah, yeah, it was in Baku. Baku, yeah. I remember this. I remember them like on the ground, rolling around. <laughs> they were grappling. Why? Yeah. 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 Both <laughs> chess stories end the same way with they two were, guys They were wasted. Outside. They were both so drunk. <laughs> he did that in St. Louis as well, and he's actually pretty good. No, no, but he's actually yeah. very, no, very good. No, this is what I'm saying. Like, I've seen him, and, it, and like, he is pretty good. In grappling. In, in grappling, yeah. It's yeah, different. Boxing it's very, very different. Yeah. Was it against Ziska? Uh, the other time? No, in, in Baku. I, I don't remember who it okay. was, but I remember it was That's a Danish weird. guy yeah. who was blonde. Yeah, yeah, I remember that too. Yeah. What did the Danish guy do? No, they, they were, were friends. They were friends. It oh, was a friendly were, bout. Just, yeah. Ah, it was friendly just for grappling fun. with a black guy. Yes. Well, he Amon did end up with a black guy the next day. It was very funny. Andrea, outside of um, the physical aspect of it, what motivates you about Wait, this? Wait, but we didn't finish. Match? Let's yes, go back go to ahead. that. Yeah. So I would, I would actually put it very close as of right now. What about you, Andrea? Oh, so you didn't, you didn't decide who? I, I think it's very close now because of the boxing being. So I think less. you're wrong in thinking the 30 seconds will make a difference. Because I, I thought two, but then after looking into it, I think 90 seconds is plenty. Amon's been working very hard. Like, he has his series out. You can see him. He's made a lot of progress. But at the end of the day, like, Lawrence is just, he has way more mass. It's, it's a similar matchup to me and Dina. Mm. He weighs more, and he's a better boxer because he's been boxing for longer. He's actually been doing chess boxing. He's been doing chess boxing. So I think he'll Does win he physically. Because huh? Amon is uh, taller, I think. Oh, but Lawrence weighs, Lawrence weighs more, for I sure. I think so. Yeah, he's been cutting crazy. Like, he's been here, and he hasn't. He doesn't even eat some days because he's still cutting weight. We, we saw his weight. I don't know if we're... Well, it'll be after the fights, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 So he weighed at 187. 187. I don't I think, know yeah. what Amon's at. I mean, he's, yeah. been, he's been here for a week, and, like, I eat triple the amount he does. So he's been losing crazy weight. And they have to fight at 185, I think. Yeah, he so is. So he still needs pounds. to lose a he's couple fine, of pounds. That's but like he's bowel fine. movement. No, no, he, water oh, weight. sorry. I think he was 184. 184, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he was, he was, he was wow. good. He was yeah, good. He was under one already. pound under. Already. He was under. Yeah, yeah, he said he was good. Yeah. yeah. I'm it was the funny. Opposite. We ordered pizza. 
<laughs> and he like looks at the pizza Aww. and he's like, can you cut me a tiny slice? I'm like, just take the slice. That's and it's so like sad. clear he cannot take the slice oh, or it'll just be too much. That reminds today I was walking to like get a healthy smoothie and I walked by these people at a dinner place and they're enjoying their meals. There's just like a bunch of carbs and you could smell it. And I was like, I cannot wait to have my first cheat meal after this, after Saturday, after the weigh-in. Because it, you've just been so, I, I feel Lawrence, very deprived when it comes so to So it's been six, six weeks now that you've been super... Yes disciplined and no no the, cheating the diet didn't get much honestly i'm dramatic because like the diet didn't get really intense until the last two weeks mm -hmm. but even as soon as six weeks in like i tried to i don't really only had like a couple like one or two cheat days in the last six weeks so, so i saw that andrea Lawrence, got yeah. into our there was our one day with snack the, drawers oh, i know oh, we have God. a snack drawer with where Oh. Well, there was some like cookie protein and some like oh, cheese. Oh, those are not very good. Yeah, but you went yeah. through all of them. They were all empty because oh. I was looking for. Yeah, something. but those are there for months. <laughs> yeah. Wait, the ones downstairs? No, they're in here. But anyway, oh go no, ahead. I didn't. I didn't touch those. Oh, okay. But protein bars aren't cheating, right? Protein no, bars those are, are also those are also healthy. I I, I know. I, I I'm kidding. We As just have a Andrea, snack drawer. I'm saying even Andrea's snacks are really healthy, and I, I before I would see her fiending occasionally, but not oh, in the last would, two yeah, weeks. Yeah, we would give in. Yeah. Not in the last. No, so no. your pick is Lawrence, finally, right? Yes. And you're you went physically. you're picking Amon. Mm, if I had to pick someone, I'd say Lawrence, but I think oh, it's okay. closer. Than I'm it very seems. excited to see. And we are cheering for our fellow Canadian. Mm. Are we rooting for anyone in particular, or? No, no, no. I mean, I said that I believe Lawrence has the better odds just because of uh, the boxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But now that I think about it, and it's only one minute and 30 seconds, I think Amman might have a chance to survive. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> Look, I don't think Amman will actually beat up Lawrence. I think Lawrence is way above yeah. in terms of skill. Yeah. Um, I've seen him. He moves well. He's, he's pretty yeah. decent. Um, and Amman, he doesn't have the footwork. I think he's still missing maybe a year. Poor Amman. A <laughs> year no, of training. He doesn't have as much training. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think... Of course. I mean, he's been training for what? Like six months? Six months? weeks Pro something like no, that probably like two less months. even in two, less yeah when, eight, I, when I saw weeks. him in Toronto it didn't seem like he had been training much he had just oh, started wow. I think wow he had and that was pretty recent you don't learn anything in, in yeah that's weeks. the thing he had just started Nothing. going to boxing classes there okay. that makes yeah he's also ah uh, that's really tough because Lawrence has been doing it for a long time yeah. yeah yeah it's really tough also I think he has the culture yeah because he is from England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In England, chess boxing is pretty chess big. Boxing yeah, and Germany. he said that he was actually going to dedicate his fight to one of his friends who passed away who started chess boxing. Oh. Yeah, he's very into yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For that reason, I think Lawrence probably will win the boxing. Now, the question is whether he manages to knock him out or not. If he doesn't, then I do believe that Amon has a pretty significant edge in chess. Chess wise, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that seems. I don't know how significant his edge is because I, I don't know Amon so well as a player. I know he's stronger than Lawrence and he's very good and he's a grandmaster. But how m much that would manifest in a blitz game. And also Amon is like very, he plays tile Tuesday constantly, right? He's always playing. Specifically in blitz. Yeah. If it would be classical. You think blitz is actually control? more advantage yes. for him? Yes. Okay. Yes. More yes. advantage for Amon. For Amon, because he plays a lot. Yeah. Oh, I've seen, I mean, he plays, yeah. that's his job basically. Yeah, yeah? true. Um, Lawrence doesn't play that much. At yeah. least it's only I don't one game. In yeah. one game, is the strength difference that significant? Let's say it's like 150 points strength difference, if that much. That's probably on the very What's high Lawrence's side. What's Lawrence's chess.com rating? I don't know. I know his FIDE rating was mid-2400s to high-2400s and then dropped to 2300s at some point. Got it. I don't know where he's at right now, though. Okay. It, yeah. Look, Bobby, you took Dina. I'll take Andrea. <laughs> okay. Don't disappoint me. Okay. Yes. Are, are well, you, you betting? You, have to official you, have to you also have to bet money All with right. somebody. Let's bet. Who do I bet with? I don't really have someone. To Fabiano, you want to make another <laughs> bet? Let's make another bet. Oh. All right. <laughs> How much? A hundred. Uh, oh, Sunday I'm, night's I'm, dinner. Just <laughs> 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 Chess economy expense. isn't doing <laughs> too well. That's going on the podcast regardless. <laughs> Please subscribe. <laughs> If you guys are watching this podcast, 50. make sure you subscribe. 50. 50 what? Push-ups? $50. Dollars. dollars. Okay. American United, dollars. United States. American dollars. Sounds like a plan. Okay. <laughs> Please win. Okay. I will follow up. It's going to cost sure. me 150 bucks. I'll make sure they take your money. I think money. I have a $500 bet. I think it was $500 on Andrea as well with Dan Smith, the poker That's player. so funny. Yeah. 
Is he uh, going to be there? Uh, no, but he'll watch. Mm, mm. Now, I feel like you are, both of you actually, um, people that are looking for that buzz, that excitement in everything, in traveling, in chess. Is this buzz, the chess boxing buzz for you, uh, Andrea, more exciting? Than our regular content? Than everything else. Everything else has the numbers on YouTube, for- numbers oh. on Twitch, um, you doing something for the first time, something exciting, doing some commentary mm. or something like that. Well, it correlates with numbers, so I think those are intertwined because mm. yeah. I'm planning to get some banger YouTube videos. And out she of this. already has mm-hmm. her. The last yeah. video was number one out of ten on YouTube, and it was her chess boxing prep yeah. video. It, it did, and it wasn't boss. even yeah. like a real video, yeah. so. I mean, number one, I think like the concept on YouTube is going to do really well, which is exciting. I mean, I'm still a workaholic. I still get happy when I see numbers rise. Um, but I like, yeah, the, the biggest advantage is I think hope the hardest thing is once this ends and I'm not training six days a week, like how many of these healthy habits I will really do long term. Mm-hmm. But I think like, you know, with food, with fitness, with just like seeing, like pushing yourself to new limits and seeing you're capable of things like you never thought before and seeing like if you really commit yourself to anything for this, which you have to be very, dis- like I had to sacrifice literally everything I was doing, but it's cool to know that I can get my goals and maybe this will go into other hobbies because there's other things I wanted to try. Maybe I'll do more boxing as well. Mm-hmm. My my goal is to really make an impression, like maybe fighting Crater Clash, but that also be a big sacrifice. So. Or if you don't get injured, we could be like, hey, that was great. Let's try <laughs> jujitsu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll let you think that. So was this even more so a self improvement or like self discovery yeah, sort it, of thing than it was just creating content? Exactly. It wasn't really about the content because you're not getting that much content about it. It's more just like, I love fitness. I love working out. I love being healthy. I've never been able to commit to it. You get distracted every other day. You live in LA. There's always stuff going on. Um, so it was like a really good opportunity. And I miss some of the things that I've had to cut out. But I've seen a lot of growth in myself. And like, yeah, exactly. You're able to learn from it, which I really enjoyed that process. It's very cool. Yeah. Speaking of, I just had this idea a second ago. Speaking of like chess crossover stuff. What about a chess drinking sort of contest? So the or is chess that bras channel. A, the, yes, <laughs> yeah. the chess bras channel. <laughs> no, but like it would have very set rules. I'm just, I know this would never like gain widespread traction. Oh, it it's would. Drinking. People, I mean, one time I challenged him on um, and I wanted, to, I needed more odds. So I said, okay, take three shots. And the man just got stronger and just became super cyan and his chest got better. So I actually think chess and chess players and alcohol is very funny. I actually used to do a lot of streams that would involve drinking challenges. Oh, yeah. And surprise, surprise, People they were mostly it. against the chess bras. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we would do shot odds, and those would be some of the best performing streams. But now that we've grown bigger and we kind of have more brand responsibilities, the image of, you know, people who are promoting... <laughs> the kid, little kids looking up to you guys. <laughs> what are I, these chess players doing to get better? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't want the tagline to be, drinking is cool, you know? So... Yeah, that's, that's the yeah, problem. Yeah. I mean, it's a fun thing, but... Yeah, at some point, when once you grow so large, yeah. you have a lot of responsibility but as well. One of the things that I do actually really like is when you're at a bar or something like that playing chess playing chess and drinking casually mm. is just very very enjoyable yeah and it's one of those unique things that you only really do at chess tournaments because you have to be doing it with people who are near your level and it's so fun the best party trick for us girls oh yeah is you go to a random house party like you know la influencer party and you bring a chess set and you don't bring it out until later the night when everyone's really faded and you just start challenging people. And that that is how you win everyone over at the chess Oh, yeah. And, and the way people's mind gets blown is very like, interesting. Oh, my <laughs> God. Like, the reactions are hilarious. Yeah. Have you hustled people in chess? I have, yes. I've had my decent. I mean, it runs in the family. Papa Botez taught us young. Yes, <laughs> this is true. And you guys did that in New York a little bit. Did you guys do it here in L.A. as well? Uh, there's coffee chess, which we went to a little bit. Have you guys ever done coffee chess? Yes. We're actually planning on oh, going nice. there on Saturday. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. Are yeah. you playing the Trash Talkers or podcast? Well, not Christian her, already so sure. played. Um, Boston Mike. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Dave. He has a, an Italian name. No, um, he's the great, oh, great something. The great Carlini. 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 Yes, yeah. Carlini. yes, yes. But this was many months ago, and we expected to go on the channel. 
and it just never did. <laughs> but I think at some point it might. I guess they have the footage sitting That's there. That's what they said. They said they're going to put uh, even our like podcast link in the description. Okay. So cool. Speaking of your matches, out. Christian, remember when you played us? And you had to do that TikTok dance. That was terrible. I don't remember that. <laughs> that was terrible. But yes. maybe not surprised. for the podcast, you could over, I overlay you. the dance I so that people like can see. No, no, no. Do you remember First which all, dance it was? I don't remember. But that's the problem with Twitch. They disappear. I don't know. Maybe you guys have it. I if you guys have it, you can give it to me. Maybe I'll consider people it. people ripped it off on you and put it on YouTube. I think we may have posted it on YouTube. I wonder if we have. Did you? I think you did. Actually, yeah. I, I think you did. Wait, what that. was your name? The Count, Count Life. Live. Count Life. I remember. No, no, no. Don't pull <laughs> it out right now. <laughs> no, no. Can you find <laughs> it? Yeah, no, no. You're I have a vivid right. memory. <laughs> have you seen it? Fine. No, I haven't. Okay, we'll show you. Let me it's terrible. This is well, great. I tried finding it, but I think you'd have to go through our old videos. But But that's the thing. Yeah, on, on Twitch, everything disappears. Oh. Thank God. Yeah. On YouTube, everything stays, unfortunately. Yeah. Fortunately, Andrea did not find it. Very good. Very I'm sure good. Yeah, you were, we'll, we'll have to do some digging. If you watch the podcast until this moment, please link it. Yeah, <laughs> link it in the comments. Find it. It's somewhere in our videos. We've been talking a lot about uh, the chess boxing, but you guys are first and foremost content creators, and you've been streaming for a while. I want to talk about your beginnings in 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 that world, and you started. Is family business, Alexandra. The family business, it, yes, it, it, yes. It is a family business. It yeah, is now. Actually, we've like had a it. lot it's of like family it's the streams. Mafia. Exactly. Like they don't need to know. <laughs> yeah. Type of family business. Yeah, I mean, I started it as a hobby, and you know, chess was always something I really liked, and then it grew into a lot more than that, and I went full time onto it when I only had like 200 viewers or so, um, and then I started getting Andrea into it, and I convinced her to not go to college and come join the channel. Channel. As you can imagine, the parents were very excited about that. But they're happy now. <laughs> now I and think. I think you, Andrea, were streaming on a different channel. Yeah, you had your own channel. Yeah, I was like, you know, I was 15. Playing I didn't really know what I was doing. I started my own account. And then, well, it only happened because of the pandemic. Because otherwise, there's no way we would have been in the same house streaming together. And they're like, wait, like, we're so similar. We do the same thing. Let's I just think merge. It, No, I think it would have happened regardless because at the time I pushed Andrea to make her own channel and then I was thinking of bringing her on. So I would have suggested that you do that regardless. Really? I, I, yeah. don't, I want, in my head, the merge would not have happened of the pandemic. No, I, it was like I, the I would have, I would have told you you should come try to join regardless. Interesting. But, but the pandemic that you made guys it were easier. together in the same yeah. house, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I, I came to stay home. Because I, I didn't really, when I, I mean, I was also really young. I was in high school. I was planning mm -hmm. to go to college. But I didn't really like solo streaming that much. I was also, didn't even know anything about Twitch. Um, but I think I really started enjoying it when we started doing things together more often. And the interesting thing I've noticed about Andrea is for the past three years or so, she applied to college because um, she really wanted to go. And now she finally decided she's done with that. And it's <laughs> been the year that I've seen her take content the most seriously. That is actually, Whereas before, nice I felt like I always had to kind of push you a I little really bit. I think about it. Yeah, But that's now thing. you've been yeah. pushing yourself and it's nice. It's nice. Mm. So you were like dabbling with the idea of pursuing different paths? I was for the last, mm -hmm. I mean, I took two or three gap years and I kept reapplying. <laughs> I, we Andrea just Austin. loves college essays. It's yeah, a big no, hobby and, of that, hers. It was so consuming and it, I hated it, but I kept doing it because I was 100% set on going to school because um, that was my dream ever since like I was young. I was like, I have to go to university. I want to get the college experience. And we moved to Austin, so I went and got into UT Austin Business Honors. Then we moved to LA. Then I got into UCLA. And then I kept switching to schools and then I realized like I, that's not actually what I want. And it was, you know, big talk with the parents, big identity crisis. Um, but I figured out. That Did I you actually want. attend any classes? No. Or? Oh, well, I snuck into Stanford and Stanford. Fun and went to a class, but not like I never went to college. No. Mm. Was it any particular thing that convinced you that you don't want to pursue that? Um, yeah. I mean, it was a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mainly it's what am I going to use my degree like practicality? I'm not gonna use my degree for my job. Like this, I like working on our business. There's so many ways we can take it. I'm learning so many things. Um, the second reason was, you know, the social pressure to have the regular college experience, you know, because that's what everyone my age is enjoying doing. And I kind of felt sometimes like I was missing out on the youth since I was, you know, working. And also everyone in my industry is like 10 years older, which I like now. Um, and the third reason was just pressure for my parents because they're Romanian immigrants. and. 
as took them a Christian long might time. understand yeah. the mentality. It took them a long time to accept. And my mom still, and I tell my mom, like, if there's a subject later down the road that I really love and I'm really passionate about, uh, you know, we can, this is something that is very dependent on the time and taking the momentum, but studying and finding interesting subjects you can do at any point in life. And for you, Alexandra, actually, that was a big decision as well. But you actually went through four years of college. Did you finish? You finished Stanford. Yeah, right? I finished. Um, yeah, I, I actually wanted to take a gap year before going to college to study chess just because I really liked it and I was never able to fully focus on it. Um, but my parents really wanted me to go to school and uh, they were upset that I didn't take a chess scholarship at UTD, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Yeah, no, I did. I did go. Th I did go through college, and then before streaming, I worked on my own company, and we raised, and we did that for three years. Um, and then when it failed, I just moved to New York alone and started chess streaming. I remember we were talking about that in 2018 in Baku, actually. Oh yeah. And you just raised like a million dollars yeah, or something yeah, yeah, like yeah. that in 2016. Yeah, must have been 2016. You raised Was a million it 2016? dollars. 2016. Yeah, almost. So what happens with their money? They just don't get it back. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Cool. So was it Q, Q Combinator? Or? Uh, we did Y Combinator as oh, well, but yeah. we, we, we raised from a company called Lightspeed. Okay. Yeah. We, you know, I mean, overall, we raised like 800 something thousand. But I think that was yeah. something but that you were really excited yeah, about. Yeah, I remember. And then I remember because we were, I was at the Olympiad and that's when we were on, I was on the call with the investors and they're like, yeah, we're going to do it. And then I was going to go back for my final year at Stanford. Um, and then we were working on the company and doing that. Shout out to my co-founder who just started his second company and he's going to kill it. But that was still a huge experience boost for you, I think. Just yeah. meeting a lot of people in the VC world, just knowing how to uh, pretty much bring a brand together. Was that something that you feel helped with both his life as well? I think it's something that helped tremendously because even things like Botas Abroad, which we did our travel show, and that got like our some of our best numbers over a period of a month. That process is like you put together a proposal, you put together the financials, you pitch it to Twitch, you see if they want to do it. And it's a lot of skills that I was already familiar with. Um, and the other thing I like to do as a hobby is invest in companies. Um, and I'm doing more and more of that or like doing advisory, especially startups in the creator space. So it's kind of like mixing the passion for creative things and also the skills I learned in the startup world. Um, but you know what? I, I wish it hadn't failed. Mm. One door closed and one door uh, definitely yeah. open. Yeah, for exactly. You. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I actually think because the startup failed, I was so scared of failing twice in a row mm. on streaming that I was so determined. I kind of miss it because you're so hungry and you're so passionate. And when you have no plan B, it's one of those exhilarating highs, kind of like a fight. Like you, you can't lose. Losing is yeah. so bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when did you see the potential that it would grow into something really big? When I decided to go full time uh, into chess streaming, it was actually interesting. So at Y Combinator, they talk about how it's better to have a hundred people who love your idea than a thousand people who like it. And it's really good to start with a small niche and monopolize it. And that's kind of what chess streaming was. Nobody knew if the market would grow for sure, but the people who watch chess and the people who like chess really, really love it, and they were super supportive. So it was one of those things where, you know, it'll it'll work at least as good as like some product management job for the short term, but long term, I think this can grow as a market. And if it does, being here first and already having that is gonna be a huge boost. That being said, got super lucky with what happened after in the chess boom. And when it happened, I was so excited, I was like, crying and of tears so it was already your your business experience that alerted you to the the different factors in the chess community that might make it like a something with a lot of growth and then everything else it, made it, it, explode. It, it definitely helped and i talked to a lot of uh my friends who are more entrepreneurial and they were the only supportive ones everybody else including one of my own investors was like you need to go into the real world at some point and everybody who didn't understand it was like, you're just doing chess. So did that motivate you? Those oh, type hell. of words? Oh, oh yeah. I find it so funny. I find it so funny. Mm. But it's interesting that like we, we find it normal that like something like Dota 
Yeah. You know, people will love to watch that. And then there was always, oh, chess is something for nerds. So, but we found out that, yeah, people like to watch Dota, but they also like to watch chess and other games. And chess, it, it has an appeal that it's not just a very niche thing. Yeah. And I think it was something more than that, too, because the typical advice you get if you're a founder and you fail is like, go work at a company in an industry that you want to start a company in the future. So going into content or going into chess, people would just kind of look down on because like, who really cares that much about content? Who really cares that much about chess? So I actually got super lucky because then, you know, flash forward a year to two years later, chess is booming and creator economy is one of the hottest topics. So I did kind of luck out in that sense. And that is something that caught me by surprise because we actually met in 2019 at um, the finals of the Pro Chess League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we chatted a bit about that and you were doing streaming and you said that you don't want to do this for a very long time. That's mm-hmm. so funny. And then immediately you just exploded basically and then that was all she wrote. Well, I, I think when it was, I don't want to do streaming for a very long time, I told myself that if things aren't growing or they're not really exciting, I'm not going to stay for it. It has to be doing very well or I'm going to hop on to the next thing because I really needed that adrenaline. Yeah. yeah. Because if the goal isn't big enough and you could work on anything, it's just not exciting. So in 2019, I, I, I was also at that tournament. I it was... Yeah. Yeah, it was before the pandemic, before I mean, we had no idea any of this would happen. But at that point, you still had your major doubts. And I'm glad you guys are telling me this because I don't really mm-hmm. remember what I was thinking. No, I don't then. remember this. I'm just like going off of what oh. you said. <laughs> I, we, I don't think we spoke. We oh, spoke okay. um, I think we spoke a little bit. I remember sitting next to you at the Pro Chess League. Yeah, I, I very vaguely remember that tournament. Yeah, I only yeah, remember yeah. playing. It was a very cool eSport event. Yeah. But I don't remember anything else besides the playing. I remember you were doing commentary, I think, right? Yeah, I was doing interviews. The interviews after yeah. that. Oh, yeah. You we, you did interview me at that tournament, yeah, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, now it's coming back, starting to come back. Yeah, no, I was doing interviews there. Yeah, and I remember at some point you started speaking Chinese, and I was like, what? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. What I, is I, happening? I did, I did <laughs> one of the interviews in Mandarin, and I think I probably butchered it, but I just That's thought awesome. it would be cool to try. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember who you interviewed in Mandarin? Um, um, it was the, 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 pandas. the pandas. But like, it, I don't UA remember or? which of the okay. players it was because I, I did multiple ones. Mm-hmm. It was like three different players. Ah, okay. Yeah. That's very cool. They must have been really surprised. I, I, the thing is, I was able to ask the question and then the follow ups were really rough, but it's okay. <laughs> I did not understand what's happening. So I'm sure everybody was like as amazed as, uh, as, as we were. What's uh, what's in the actually, pipeline? Actually, speaking yeah, of ahead. the pro chess league, um, do you think that will ever bloom into something it's bigger? Coming back. For it's coming back next year. So. I, I know it's coming back, and I know there have been some discussions amongst teams and sponsoring like chesses and esports. But do you think it's promising? Is my question. I hope so. I mean, I I was a bit disappointed because I heard rumors that it would you know esports companies would start coming in and and not just for the content creators, but also for the professional chess players. And I heard that Maxime, had a, uh, Maxime Bachelor Le Grave had a lot of interest from, from a French company. And um, I was told that some, maybe some companies would be interested in other players as well, but it never really developed into anything. I don't know if that's because things just move very slowly and maybe it will next year. Um, and I think that chess.com wanted to do something this year and it, they ended up coming up with a big project, which was the Rapid Chess Championship and uh, the Global Chess Championship and all that. But they didn't end up making like this big eSports league. And it's going to come back as a pro chess league, which is a great event, but not, not in the scope that I guess we were hoping for. But I hope so. That would be very cool. I mean, it's really up to the companies, right? Mm-hmm. Do you I think mean, it makes sense, though? Yeah, why not? For who? As for chess to be an eSport? We need more personality. You mean why not have it over the board? Yeah, why not have it over the board? Or what, you already have so many team events. Can you really build loyalty around bringing different chess players to esports teams that maybe they're not from that city or don't have an affiliation affiliation with? Yeah, I think that is one of the problems. Is that chess players tend to concentrate in cities very mm-hmm. specifically, like maybe it's Moscow, now it's St. Louis, or mm-hmm. very often it's New York, right? But you, you wouldn't have 
equally strong teams based on regions. Right. Yeah, chess is also such a solo sport. Like for video games, you're literally playing with a group of four people. But it's really hard to build that type of fan love when, uh, yeah, you need more to bond a team over than just, oh, you're from the same city, I feel like. But I mean, if you lose and it affects your team score. Yeah. Yeah, but it's different when you're like playing a video game on a team. Sure, when but you're cooperating I, yeah, on the but same But I, I find this esports conversation very interesting. I don't follow much of esports and video games, so. Would you require to have the players in the same place? I don't think that would make sense because, I mean, at the start, you just need it to not be structurally difficult or it's never going to happen. And so I think if there's any esports teams that would form a league, they would just try to get the most entertaining plus top talent on their roster and that's what would help the most and then it would just be you know will their esports team adopt their chess team as as part of it i think there I, were talks actually no there were talks for sure. or an indian uh no, for super in general league. there were yeah but I, I actually i think it would be interesting to have it maybe by country that's true yeah like country. an olympiad because that's what but if it's a yeah. country then and it's not backed by an esports team then you kind of lose the money that would come into but why wouldn't an esports team back a country back a group of players from a country i think it's more complicated i think esports teams want to be able to build a fandom to their fans and have it integrated as part of like the roster of esports that they already watch and be able to sell that to sponsors and i think it's harder to do when it's hey like support th we're supporting this country it's much easier to be like we're in team optic right now this is the optic chess team that's just much better for branding mm -hmm. So well, they, they don't want to make it about, let's say, India or the United States. They want to make it about... Themselves. Uh-huh. Interesting. And could they make some sort of... And, and embed them into the current fan base, too. Could they have, like, a mix of players that represent their team, but from a specific country? So, like, this is the Optix team all coming from India. Mm. Optix team all coming from India or wherever it is. That's a mixture of brands. Once they build the Optix I, I think team. it just would be not what their priorities are because if you think of what drives the esports team, it's just getting the best players overall. You want to win championships. And then two, it's personalities. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that like a specific country won't have that, but it's much easier to mix to and just, match. Yeah. Yeah. Would you have any rating cap rules or would you just try to get the best players and whoever has, I don't know, the best branding, the best... Mm -hmm. The most money, I guess. I mean, ideally, you know? no rating cap makes it the best, right? I think so. I think but so. But of yeah. course, you might have teams that just completely destroy, and if it's lopsided, then it's less fun to watch someone who's just dominating. Um, Especially if they get those players contracted in for a few years, and then you have a few yeah. years of complete domination by any specific esports yeah, 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 team. Yeah, exactly. And um, chess is not yet established as a team sport. As right. much as, let's say, Counter-Strike. Of course, and, it, it, and it, right? it makes sense on Andrea's point. You're not working with people on the specific game, even if it impacts the team. I, I think the main reason chess, is, and I don't know much about this, but chess is behind in the esports industry is just because there's not enough money in chess. Like video mm -hmm. games, it's like 20 years ahead mm -hmm. of chess. And if you think of like the tournaments that gamers are competing in, the prize funds are huge. That's why like actually making a team, like the, the they're making a living just playing online video games all the time. Right. But if you're playing just online chess tournaments, it's already hard to make a living playing in real life chess tournaments. Imagine online, like the, there's even a smaller pool of tournaments. I, I think it's just there's not enough money in chess. But, uh, but I think the money in esports is also tied into viewership. Yeah. And that was the reason sure. why now people are open to it. Whereas if you would have looked three years ago, they weren't. Yeah. So you've kind of seen that huge shift. Yeah. Which is why like if PCL were to start off again and it was starting to get really good viewership, that could really mm -hmm. spark just, desires just, for a league. Just spitballing and to go off a bit on your point. Um, and this is a format that I really enjoyed watching, but I've only seen it in one specific place. And it's a very informal event done by the St. Louis Chess Club. And they're not trying to make money. They just do things for fun. Uh, and the event was you have top players who make five moves and alternate. Mm -hmm. And you have one amateur in that case. But that would make it a team sport to yeah. go off your point. If you had, let's say, Magnus and Ding and Jan, or, mm -hmm. and they alternate five moves, and you might think they're going to play the same, they're going to have the same plans and think of the same ideas. But in reality, top players all, like, they don't have any idea what the fuck their last guy was doing. Uh -huh. Like, you made this move, and I've seen this in action. Yeah. 
and Hikaru sees Mamadi Arab made a movie. He's like, what? Yeah. What was that? What am I supposed to do now? And it is a very entertaining format. I don't yeah. know if it would ever take off, but as a one-off idea, maybe. I would watch that as a stream. As an esport, I think the issue is when people think esport, they think highest caliber gameplay, and I think any kind of impurity where you're not mm -hmm. get, getting that kind of ruins it. But yeah. as the format, but as as a format, as a stream, that'd be super fun. Like more entertaining than Hand and Brain. I like yeah. it. Because I mean, cool same how you videos. have stuff like chess boxing. It's just great content. So it's a one-off. Getting a team of people who are yep. doing moves sounds really fun to watch, especially with a prize pool or people training together. Yeah, you're probably right that it's it seems a bit like a diversion, not like a serious thing. How do you turn the competitive aspect on? Or no, that but they would, I mean, with money, with money, the top players will be competitive. Even without, without money, a guy like Magnus will always be competitive. But you put money in the mix, and of course, everyone gets competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it, no, I, I think it would still be competitive. I just think it wouldn't work perfectly as an esport league. Mm -hmm. Another problem with chess, I feel, is that we don't have that branding as a sport. Like you guys got signed as content creators, mm -hmm. not yep. as chess players, right? Yeah. Uh, Hikaru also content creator, not a yeah. chess player necessarily. So how do we brand chess as a standalone um, esport? Pretty much. Right. That's the question. And I think that's what chess.com is trying to answer. Trying to do, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm not a marketing guy. I leave it to them. Yeah. Uh, hopefully they make the inroads into that. Yeah. yeah. What's in the pipeline for you guys in the next after this chess boxing event? What do I you guys have think in store? After. I need a win and then <laughs> my life, everything has been... Actually, wait. No, we have something big in yeah, the Yeah, Andrea, <laughs> wait. Did you just forget? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> my, my dude. Alexander was like... I totally <laughs> forgot. We're moving to New York. Andrea, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, I forgot. No, I told you. I'm stressed. I forget about everything. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're moving to New York. Botez takes on New York. Heck yeah. That's a big Hopefully. one. We're moving out of the content house. Yes. Before that, I'm playing in the world uh championship held by the world poker tour in uh december i'm gonna do the 10k entry i'm probably gonna lose but they're covering my free roll wpt uh, world yeah, poker yeah, yeah. Uh, series yeah whatever the name is ws that's yeah. it, it, it's wsp this, one, this one's like the world w poker tour that's yeah. what ah, I'm got it, it. Got yeah it, got it got it um and then i'll also do some creator games so continuing the fun the fun poker stuff but then we move to new york which is actually a big move because, you know, LA is where all of the creators are. And I'll be honest, I have wanted to move back to New York for a while now because I used to live there and I moved away during the pandemic and I kept wanting to move back um, for a lot of different reasons. But Andrea, I think if I were staying in LA, she would prefer that. So it's actually a bigger yeah, decision I'm for just... you, which I'm not pressuring her to move. Mm. Yeah, I thought about it for like 10 minutes. I was like, yeah, being in separate cities. No, I'd rather just live with my sister. So it's but you guys have to stay together. I mean, yeah, you have yeah, to stay we together. Can't, we can't break up. It's too soon. It's too <laughs> soon, yeah. So is that is that a business move or is it because you just want to, to live in New York? For me, it's personal. So I've moved once a year for the last eight years or however many. And similar to how we were talking about before in terms of routine, moving all the time and not feeling like I could put down my roots is a little bit stressful. And I'm at this stage where I'm really into self-improvement. And I think an important part of that is starting to settle down in a city where I see myself being for a few years, which I have multiple reasons for that. Um, and I just think having that will make me be able to do a lot better in everything else. So I actually think it will be a good business move as well, but it's coming from a place of it's important for me personally, and I've just started really understanding what my priorities are at this stage. And for Andrea, you're, you're young. I'm just along for the ride, you know? Are you excited about that? <laughs> I'm or like, that L LA was great for a year, but you know, we can make content in New York. I'm down to experience There's a lot a of good city. content in New York. If it goes wrong, I'll come back. I'm young. I Some of the best content you guys put out there. Was yeah, most from of the New best York. content we've had on YouTube is from New York, and yeah. the time the zone. Chess is culture is yeah. great. The, ch the chess culture is great, and the time zone is also very beneficial for streaming. Yeah, time zone's much better. We have those great chess parks too. 
Yeah. Washington Square, Union Square. Right? Yeah, we, we, we hit those all the time. time. There. Yeah. <laughs> Too much time, honestly, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I spend a lot of my childhood playing in those parks. Oh, really? Yep. Have you posted any videos playing chess hustlers no, after there? No. Wait, you should do it. Yeah, you got to yeah, go. Yeah, maybe if I, I, I haven't been to New York in three years, I think. Hey, oh, wow. when we Pandemic move, we'll host time you. for a new yeah, show. I'd love to do some content in New York. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know. I have cool. a photo when I was eight years old. I'll just like, very short story. Um... And I, they wanted to do a photo shoot for an article uh, for the New Yorker. And I was like this young prodigy kid, whatever. And they wanted to do a short interview and then a photo shoot. And they wanted to do it in Washington Square Park. And I thought, okay, you know, it's annoying for a kid, but it won't take too long. And it Why ends is up, it annoying? <laughs> yeah. well, like, I don't know. I, I didn't want to get my photo taken. And I was just oh, a yeah. kid. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's I don't want to, like, kids don't understand publicity. Yeah, 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 that's fair. And it ended up raining, just, like, pouring massively. <laughs> and we were stuck in the rain for hours and hours. This was my, my coach at the time, Bruce Pondolfini. So, like, oh, hours so of cool just... That's so cool that Pondolfini they're, they're, like, trying to, you know, get the perfect shot. And, and they finally got the shot. And then we recreated it years later with Bruce. Oh, that's awesome. In 2015. We that's went to the awesome. same bench and, and took the same exact photo which is me standing on the bench and he's really tall and i'm like that's awesome big, you know? and pendolfini's end games is one of my favorite chess our books. dad loves that our book. dad loves he's a great it. coach yeah he great gave coach. it to everybody yeah that's so wholesome yeah that's, that's a, a good memory tidbit. well it was um, terrible at the time i was hating it but now it's a good memory that's reasonable <laughs> i would i would hate being in the rain for two hours as well i was thinking about it and i think you guys were mentioning um this type of split like you want to cool off a little bit, calm down, and Andrea whoa, whoa, whoa. is still whoa, like whoa, super. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. When I say <laughs> cool off, I mean don't move settle. every single settle, year. Settle in. She, she settle in. Settle location-wise, yeah. so that the growth will be easier to focus on because what the foundation if, is there. What if at some point you will want to raise a family? Those she thoughts has me. ever what do you come mean? No, What do you mean? I raise this <laughs> girl every <laughs> single day. <laughs> She can't even make me breakfast. What do you mean? She doesn't even <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I do want a family one day. Um, At some point. But I, in the next five, ten years. Um, pr uh, honestly, That's too soon. I'm calling it too <laughs> soon. No, no. I, I, I actually do want a family. And you know, when you're a woman, the quality of your eggs oh decreases God, not over the time. Egg talk again. <laughs> okay, I've had this I've talk a this few talk times. So I guess whatever. we're getting there. I need to freeze my eggs. <laughs> so I do want to freeze my eggs. Yes. Um, but I do want to have be able to have kids and i do want to have them at a young age just because it's better for the kids and i i'm not saying i have big goals for those children's but you know we have a family have business speak Mandarin, and they have to be good at math and they have to know computer science and they have to play chess but they also have to have a social life but they also have to be athletic at the same time <laughs> so are the are these <laughs> as yet fictional kids are taking over Botez Live at some point? <laughs> Is well, this the future? Well, I thought about it. I don't think there's the not room it, it, for more. It's, it's not good to put kids on camera when they're young. <laughs> well, that's actually well, it's probably not good for them. But for them, for the business, but it would it's have a hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't want to use my kids for that. But again, I but have, think I have time. Fun. I have time, and um, also like at some point, Andrea and I might want to do separate content just because we're doing things differently. But I oh, think there will always be. A, I didn't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't like. What if you become a DJ? Okay. <laughs> what then you? you'll be my backup dancer. <laughs> yeah, you know I can't do that. <laughs> yes, you can, and yes, you will. Is this your Last time I tried not. to come behind you while you were yeah. DJing, I got kicked out by yeah. her first groupie, who I, I thought guess. was her security guard. Is this yeah. your plan to become a DJ in the future? No, no, it's just a small tangent. So she, she she's been getting Chess more into DJing. DJ. Um, I was like DJing, yeah. but then I started boxing. There's too much to do. I mean. No, Andrea and I have actually been working. We've been working together really well and splitting tasks. And even when we do our individual things, it's kind of worked to put them on the YouTube channel and things like that. But we do have separate interests. Like Andrea really likes DJing. Let's say I like poker. Or I'm like really into startups and things like that. So those things might change, but I think we'll always have some kind of core. But then on top of working together, we're actually genuinely very close, yeah. which you know, has, was maybe surprising at first. It was very surprising. I learned so much about you the first year when we lived together. I was shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I did not even know this woman my entire life. She's a whole different person. What was the but biggest was surprise? <laughs> if, it's, if it's not a secret. 
Um, <laughs> well, or I can't any, talk. Surpri- any surprise. Look, we're not PC on the um, She was more podcast, fun so. than I Anything. expected. I always thought, like, oh, the older sister is the good child. I was the Doesn't good get child. In- no, she was the bad child. I was the one who got in, <laughs> in trouble and got caught. I was the better child. It was just clumsier. If she was a wild one. She was, you she was, no, no she was a wild card, and I didn't think that till I moved in. Yeah. I like it. Well, that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to finish it off. Uh, <laughs> I think it's getting late here in LA. Thank you very much for uh, wait, Andrea. Us. Is it your bedtime yet? No, it's uh, that's the sad it's thing. It's probably We're, past the no, bedtime. It, yeah. It's ten eleven. I, I go to bed at ten thirty. That's okay. <laughs> we'll f- we'll figure it out. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Go it back to your wrap. Oh, that was that was my closing statement. Fabi, do you have anything no, to add? On speaking about bedtimes, I really like early bedtimes, <laughs> and the only time that I get to experience it because I'm naturally like I like to work at night is when I'm really jet lagged, and then you just naturally fall asleep at like nine o'clock, and then you wake up at five in the morning, and I really like that routine, and then I can't. It is ever. nice waking it's up. Really yeah, no, nice. I like that. I like that. And, and you feel super productive. Yeah, you know? yeah. And then I can't great. recreate it naturally because I just you can't. end up I'm like. Sure you no, I'm a night owl too, yeah. and I really struggle with it. I I like working at night much more than in the morning. Yeah, me too. It's just, yeah. but then you miss out on that productive feeling when you wake up early and you yeah. do a workout, and then it's like still seven in the morning. You're like, oh wow. That's nice. normally I wake That's up. That's nice. Yeah. 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 Yes. Good luck sustaining that wake up call at five a.m. It's impossible. It's very hard. Yeah. yeah. What's a, okay? Last question. What is a sustainable wake up time? And let's say you also have a social life that you could wake up at consistently. Seven. Do you not go out? Wait. What's the social life? I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, old. You should just I'm clip. Like, you should just like, clip <laughs> Bobby saying just. That. This is the geriatric <laughs> podcast. I mean, come on. <laughs> what's the so, like? You you hang out with friends and then you sleep at eleven thirty. <laughs> Yeah, you nailed it. That's the way it works. Even your cameraman is laughing at you. (laughs) Have a few beers. And (laughs) And these chess players, they're crazy, (laughs) crazy kids. Maybe get in a fight. That's a a friendly grappling. But that's that's what I consider a social life. Like legitimately, not a social life is you don't see anyone for like five days. Yeah, five days is not that long. Really? I've been through some shit these last six weeks. Yeah, I guess I guess you're jaded after all the boxing. I mean, but we always have people at our house. Uh, yeah, we're we're quite yeah yeah we're quite social here. Yeah. Um, okay, seven a.m. What about you, Christian? So early wake up call to feel productive and still have a social life. Um, I mean, seven is pretty decent. I would say eight. I would go a bit higher. Okay, Andrea. Well, it depends on the night out, you know. If it's a night out, maybe sometimes you come home Andrea at 8 goes out in LA and she comes back at like five or six or seven. It's like a war out there. Do you oh. feel like? And a then I see her. I don't like, see her until hey, two p.m. Andrea, you were supposed to be here at ten o'clock. Oh, it's, it's not on work. I, I show up to my. Yeah. Sh- it's only on my days Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm responsible, yeah. but you know, but there can be a fun night where it's like you stay out a little bit to like midnight one. You can wake up at eight. You have like solid two hours to work out to be clean. You get your work. But it really depends on the night out. You know, it's bad. For me, an early consistent wake up would be 9 or 10. Yeah, Alex is definitely not Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm a night owl. I like to fiend in the nighttime, she and that's does. when I get a lot of my ideas. But <laughs> she's very creative at night, so it makes sense. So recently I woke up, actually a couple of days ago, I woke up at 10, and I haven't done that in months. And I thought that I'm getting sick. I thought that my body is telling me that I'm supposed to sleep more and that now I'm getting sick. So ten o'clock for me is way too late. Okay. But you, you also don't to count. Hmm? Huh? I did need that for yeah, recovery. You yes, for sure. It for, yeah. But but you don't count. I mean, you have like the stable family life. You're like that is true. Baby, I'm, I'm old. Yes. It's uh, yes. ten thirty. That is. Let's wait. finish the movie. <laughs> whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! How do you know that first of all? <laughs> and no, that is not the case. But it is. Occasionally. <laughs> so for you, like eight, Wait, seven, six, wake up time? No, no, I don't have any babies. Okay. No, 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 no. I wasn't sure baby if you had a baby. Baby as in my fiance. Ah, right. I thought, but I wasn't yet. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Fiance, not. what? Not white. Gotcha, sorry. gotcha. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. yes. Yeah. Soon not to yet. be. Soon to be. Yeah. I, I remember when you guys got together, actually. I have actually known you for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, the chess world is so small. At least 10 years, yeah. Yeah. Actually, speaking of that, because I remember the name canadian chess and i wanted to know whether it was you or not have you ever played in the romanian chess team league no 
you have one so mm-hmm. it wasn't you Mm-mm. it probably was unless i was a kid because my dad put me in all the tournaments and i didn't remember which was it was which. somebody from canada very good very promising young girl chess player i think it was dinka maybe. cornelia dinka, cornelia probably, dinka. Yeah. maybe maybe it was her there so. was a lot of strong romanian chess players where we grew up now. we had a lot of Romanian. Canadians, we yes, had a lot so. of romanian chess coaches actually at least three no at four did you ever train with dumitrakia Mm-mm. No, okay, so it wasn't you. Oh man, this this uh, podcast this is, is becoming Romanian. very Romanian <laughs> now. Yes, yes. Once Dumitrake right, comes out, <laughs> you cut it off. You I cut have it to off, leave. Fabi. I have to leave. <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of like when my dad runs into like one of his dad friends, and they're like reminiscing, and like just go and just start zoning out because like you don't. Know okay, okay, you. cut cut the end of it for <laughs> retention. If you guys have been watching until now, make sure to subscribe so you can watch their future videos, and also give it a thumbs up because it helps it do better. Excellent. Awesome. Beautiful.